Anthony and Lissandro Martinez, two Ajax players that Eric Ten Hag is interested in signing this summer. Two players who may well be out of Manchester United's price range. That's the video I'm bringing you here with an update, a big update from Mike Vavage from The Telegraph. I always say that I'll bring you more than one video a day when news breaks. And for me, this is a very important story because I'm seeing hallmarks of a Jaden Sancho part two. And I want to explain exactly why, and I'll run through it with you here in this video. So please make sure you subscribe to United People's TV by the end of it if you do enjoy it. But let me run through the news with you first, and then the parallels that I can see with Sancho and how it's quite similar to this situation. The news coming from Mike Vavage is that Ajax don't want to sell Anthony, Lissandro, Martinez and Timber in the same summer. And therefore, they put an extremely high price tag on the players, which makes the chances of them leaving extremely small. Anthony between 70 to 80 million, the other two 50 million, but then he corrected himself. No, it's not 50 million. It's between 50 and 60 million for both of them. If Manchester United are looking this summer at signing Anthony and signing Martinez, the price they're set by Ajax is 130 million euros for the pair of them. Now, you might rightly say that's way overinflated because it is overinflated in the same way that Leeds asking for 65 million for Rafinha, I think is massively overinflated for Rafinha. But given it's a, it's a bit of a, kind of a bit of a seller's market for certain players of certain ilks. And when you've got Eric Ten Hag with no scouting network that he can support, that he can use to support him, and he doesn't trust anybody really at United to make the right signings, he's looking back towards his former club. They do not need to sell this summer. And this is what I mean about Manchester United now and our pursuit of Anthony, our pursuit of Martinez, and how there really are parallels that are starting to happen between what's happening here and those ridiculous... Let's be honest, they're, they're way overpriced. Anthony is not a 70 to 80 million euros player. He's a luxury signing, really, for what United need. We need a spine first, and then we sign wingers. Somebody can improve our attacking options on the wings. We need two central midfielders and a centre-back. Probably a centre-forward, more than we need a right winger. So we're not going to spend 70 to 80 million euros on it. So if that is the price, it won't happen. But this is what Ajax are doing, right? Ajax, as you know, have already agreed a deal that will see Sebastian Haller go to Dortmund in the region of 31 million euros. That's a big sale for, for Ajax. It really, really is. And if we take a look at the transfers they've already completed this summer, Raven Birch has gone to Bayern Munich for what? 15 to 20 million euros. Add on top of the fact that they're going to get 30 million for Halle. That means they've already made roughly between 50, around about 50-ish million pounds in sales this summer. And that is exactly why this is a situation which can now start to draw parallels to the Sancho situation. Because if Manchester United want to sign Martinez and want to sign Anthony, and i tell you what, it looks like we do. It looks like Eric Ten Hag has got his mind set on his former players. Now, you can agree or disagree whether that's the right thing to do this summer. But as I said, given that we don't have a scouting department that he can trust to bring in the players to fit his system, he's going to go and sign the players that he himself signed, that he brought into his system and may work in his system. So he knows that he can do that again in another team with these two signings in particular. But Ajax are effectively trying to price Manchester United out, out of a transfer because they don't want their team to get ripped apart. And therefore, it's reached a point where if we can come in with an, a, an offer that can't be refused, then they will listen. Now, does that draw parallels with anything to you? Because it absolutely should. You'll remember back in 2020 when we first went after Jadon Sancho and Dortmund set that price on Jadon Sancho. <laughs> Ironically, the exact same price. I didn't, actually didn't mean that. This is the exact same price there. The, what Ajax are asking for Martinez and Anthony goes to show the price of Jadon Sancho. My word. They wanted 130 million euros for Jadon Sancho. And what did we do? We spent all summer long totally convinced that we were big enough, good enough, and we could negotiate well enough to make Dortmund change their mind. You remember Gary Cotterill going over to Germany and the German press were laughing at him, saying, what is this dude doing here? Dortmund have already said they're not going to sell Sancho. Unless Man United come in for an offer for 130 million. We tried with a 70 million bid, an 80 million bid, I think. Refused, refused, rejected. We spent all summer long signing Sancho before we eventually signed him the next summer 
for £73 million, far more in line with what his real market value was. It's almost like Dortmund set a price on him because they simply didn't want to set him that summer. And the only way that they could have sold him that summer was one of those outrageous offers that comes in and takes that player off their hands for a fee which is over market value. Almost. But that's exactly what Ajax are doing here with setting that price tag on Anthony and that price tag on both Timber and Martinez. They are not players that Ajax want to lose this summer, right? Ajax want to hold on to the players because of what's happened here so far in the transfer window. They've lost Gravenberch. Masraoui's left as well. They've lost their manager in Eric Ten Hag. Tagliafico might be leaving. Edson Alvarez is apparently up for negotiation and offer if they do get the right offer in. And Sebastian Haller has come in, has left, sorry, because an offer was brought in to the club that they felt that they couldn't refuse. And now we're in a situation, hey, if we had gone in earlier with Anthony, if we had gone in earlier with Martinez, maybe before any Haller situation even, even evolved, then maybe it's a different conversation. So in that sense, this is definitely a consequence of United's slow play movement. Because at this point in time now, Ajax clearly feel that they are in a position where they cannot afford to lose Anthony, Martinez or Timber unless it's for an outrageous price, which they can obviously tell fans, look, we couldn't refuse these prices that came in. And that's just the situation that it is now. The Man United, we've got a choice to make. We are the pay up. Or move on. And it's swift here. This is, in my opinion, this is not really a situation where we should be stuck in negotiations again. And shit, we've, we've said that long enough. We've said that so many times. But look, Darwin Nunes was not worth 100 million euros. But he was worth that much to what Liverpool wanted to do next season. And they paid it. 75 up front with 25 in instalments. He's not a 100 million euro player. But to, to a Liverpool team that was losing Mane needed a striker, he was worth that much. I've told you, that's, that's kind of the, the valuations of players now. Is It's not really just what you think that player is worth. It's what the player is worth to that club. Now, Leeds are just taking the piss here because Barcelona are interested, Chelsea are interested. As I said, it's a buyer's market. It's a buyer's situation there. That's why they're going to try and demand 65 million for Rafinha. But that's exactly why Ajax are going to try and stifle Manchester United's interest by just putting an outrageous price tag on. There's no way that those two players are worth 130 million. But they are this summer to Ajax because of the players they've lost, because of the manager they've lost, and because of the situation they are now in, where the idea of losing two more of their key players is not unthinkable, but it has to come with an outrageous offer. And that's why Manchester United, as I said, we find ourselves in a very similar... I don't know how we manage to find ourselves in these situations so often. The De, Jong's, the De Jong transfer is so complicated with everything that's involved in it, from the finances, the restrictions, De Jong not wanting to leave, Barcelona not wanting to sell. And we're stuck in this negotiation circle. And now we've got Anthony and Martinez after Timber sort of fell through. And we're seeing a Sancho part two, where Ajax are just slapping a huge price tag on him, not because they think that that's how much that player is worth, but because of how much that player is worth to them next season. And they are two different things entirely. So you might say it's outrageous for Ajax to do it, but that's their prerogative now, is to hold on to these players. Unless United come in big. And I don't think this is a, a situation where United... Um, you might, I might be wrong here. You can let me know what you think. But th this is exactly why I was so cautious. Not cautious. I was telling you to not listen to Neil Custis earlier in the week when he said we were, United were close to a £40 million um, no, nearly, nearly a deal done. Woo -hoo -hee. I said it wasn't a nearly, nearly a deal done. And I, I, I said that the talks were there and we were interested. But Ajax are trying to price us out of a move. Mike Vavage there, as I said, when it comes to news from Ajax, he really is the strongest source from the Telegraph. And there's no reason to believe that he's making this up. But are Ajax making it up? Do you think this is just purely a negotiation tactic by Ajax to try and squeeze a bit more out of Manchester United? Or do you feel that they are going to operate in exactly the same way that Dortmund did with Sancho that summer. Just put a big price on him. Unless that's paid, we're not negotiating. And Dortmund held firm, Sancho stayed, joined United the year after. What do you think will happen this summer now with Martinez and Anthony?
I'll be really interested to know where you, what you think about this because 130 million is a lot. If we're looking at our transfer budget, we really, what's that? We won't be able to afford 130 million on those two plus Frankie de Jong. Maybe that, maybe they, maybe we can. Maybe that's our whole transfer. Those three signings and selling players. You let me know where you, what you think, where you stand, and whether you think this is just a negotiation tactic from Ajax, or whether you think this really will probably just turn into a Sancho part two, where Dortmund really just held firm on that price, and we had to wait a year to sign him. You let me know what you think in the comments below, as you always do.